I think we should begin our workshop. We'll see. We'll see how many monsters we get done tonight. Um, you know, a lot of a lot of this, I I'm hoping, has come across as less anxiety causing math, and more of the you have absolute wonderful freedom to create. Um, and that the math, oh pardon. The math will follow. Uh, the math will follow. But you should consider what you want to do first. Since so much content in monster making is um, is already there. Whether you reskin or you're making an original monster. But you want a, a stat block that at least won't, you know. You want a level, you want a CR6 monster. You know, you want it to have, you know, 300 hit points. Okay, so there's some other things we have to... You know, we might have to adjust, but we can do that. So it takes a little bit of work, or as you're going to find out, if you don't want to do it on paper, there are websites uh, such as this that will hold your hand through the process. Uh, enjoy your one then, uh, Cybernetic. Uh, we're we're going to have some fun creating some monsters. Now, you may recall we talked about just plain old reskinning. Whether you're calling a goblin a kobold, you're still running it as with, as with goblin mechanics. You're just calling them kobolds. Um, we also did a, a reskinning where we turned a black pudding into a scarecrow. And it had its own unique setup. We then randomly rolled up a monster we built uh, kind of a not a culture necessarily for the monster but we built a city in which it lives um, conditions uh, we discussed its behavior its uses uh, and from there after spending really just an hour having fun and building a fantasy setting then we just applied a really quick stat block a really quick stat block to the creature Oh, Grace of Darkness, hey, thank you very much for re-upping, and welcome back, Grace. Frogman, hello, hello. You know, in this, so in this case, if we wanted our, our ooze that we created last night, uh, if we wanted our ooze to be a CR4, then we could have all of the, the conceptual ideas uh, that we wanted, and we simply just abide by the line going across and mechanically it is a CR2 creature if we don't give it anything special and even if we do give it something special you know we come down here to page 280 and 281 there are many there are many things that a monster can have that do not affect the challenge rating of the monster the challenge rating remember is this this is pure crunch Numbers versus numbers. And it was brought up, I think Santa said. Jeez, oh, I'm sorry. Pardon me, everyone. I think it was Santa who said, well, wouldn't that increase the uh, the roleplay challenge rating of a monster if it has, you know, chameleon skin and all this? Absolutely, yes. Though when it comes down to it, if we, if we dehumanize your character and your character is simply... A bunch of stats that function because of the amount of hit points like uh, it all kind of funnels down to one then that is where the core of the math when it comes to combat is concerned and many of these abilities do not affect the challenge rating different perceptions languages um, certain you know certain abilities like here's redirect attack and you'll find this on a goblin boss if you want to know how that ability works. You go to the monster manual, go to G, goblin, look for the goblin boss. And if you give that ability to your monster, you don't have to... It doesn't affect the math in a way that it, it creates uh, a recalculation of challenge rating. And so even if you do just go right up here, all, whoop, all the way across, because you want a level 4... Level two, whatever you want. 
you can have a ton of fun and think about the concept of the monster and the unique aspects that you want it to have. Hmm, pardon. For tonight, we are going to... Um, we're not so much going to start with a pure st uh, stat line. We are going to throw ideas and find out what it uh, what it comes to. And if we want to adjust because we want a certain challenge rating, then we'll adjust and keep all the cool roleplay stuff that we came up with. And as many abilities as we can to keep it functional. Uh, to begin then... To get our workshop going, and, and I will be calling on you all to provide some roles in chat. Uh, we will not need this right now. I'm going to scoot this over here. What kind... What kind of a monster are we going to... Uh, are we going to be making? And this... This worksheet is something I devised along, you know, there's no hard rules for this. This is simply a way to get us to think, because I want us to think about the monster, and the stats, the stats will follow. We're, we're going to talk about the stats. What or who is this monster? Got up to do something, forgot to do the thing, though, sat back down, had to get back up because I remembered the thing. <laughs> So, so it's a good... Uh, you're getting steps, oh sheeps. Every time I watch Mighty Morg's workshop, I go, Wait, that's in the DMG? I should really read it. But I don't want to crack Ben Stein open. <laughs> well, uh, we'll reference the things here that we're talking about, Raven. Um, you know, I the DMG is an excellent resource. I understand it can seem onerous at times. Uh, so, hey, stick with me, kid, and uh, hopefully I won't lead you wrong. Um, so, to get things going... Uh, there are 14 types of monsters in 5th edition D&D. Now, I do not have a D14 command in my bots. Boo. Now, what we can do is go odds or evens on an initial roll and then roll a uh, roll an 8-sided die. Uh, so, what we'll do here, Raven, could you type exclamation point 1D4? And this is going to be for high or low. One and two is low. All right. Now, uh, refry. I need you to type exclamation point one D eight. And we're going to ignore the result of an eight. So this is really only going to be a one through seven. I, I always have my handy dandy. I, I can, you know, I can mix my own here, but I'd love to incorporate you all in the process on a four. So aberration beast, celestial, a construct. Our first monster is going to be primarily a construct, but kind of is like something else. And this is a good example. Uh, many of us might think a construct would be uh, an iron golem, you know, very robotic. A flesh golem, a flesh golem is a construct, but it's made with dead body parts. So kind of undead, at least in appearance and some mannerism it could be. So we have our, primarily we're making a construct that is going to have construct considerations. Uh, now, t what is our but kinda? Black Wolf, will you please roll a d4 in chat? Well, hey, Nina. Uh, I mean, the the Screaming Lamb uh, is open-minded to all kinds of, uh, you know, cutting-edge technology. Stops on a 2. Uh, so we have... Uh, we're once more lo uh, rolling low. Uh, Nina, will you please give me a D8 roll in chat? Exclamation point one D8. Six. 
One, two, three, four, five, six. Elemental. Our first, our first monster then, I want us to consider. We're making a construct, but it kind of has elemental properties to it. Now, a, an example of this in concept might very well be a clay golem. It is a construct, comma, but it certainly has a lot of earthy properties to it because that's what it's made from. I mean, do you just want the Iron Na or the Fire Nation to roll over a shoe con? What are you doing to us here? Come on. <laughs> shoe con wants the Fire Nation to roll over us. <laughs> Well, let's see if it works. Um, yeah, something like a Gnomish Vault Keeper. We'll, we'll see where we go. Uh, let's see. Hark, will you please roll a D10 in chat? And we're going to find out where this monster is going to be found. It lives in an area that contains these elements. A six. So a mountain... And, uh, Hypnotic, I don't think you've rolled yet tonight. Hypnotic, can you roll a d10, please? Eight. Underdark. Now, Underdark is also, um, caverns, great crevices, canyons, tunnels, caves. And so we have a construct that has some kind of elemental twi what a twist to it and it's primarily going to be found in a mountainous uh, well i guess on top of a mountain and under a mountain maybe it's some kind of a mining bot maybe it's some kind of a, a harvester or a patrol inside a volcano it if you yeah this could be a volcano there's lava in in uh in them thar mountains and underdarks I'm seeing a couple Ewees in chat. All right. What is the size of our monster that we're making? English Mudkip, greetings to you, and now you have homework. Haha, ha, this is what you get for speaking up. I need you to give me a percentile roll. Exclamation point 1D100, please. Fifty-nine. All right, so we're making a medium-sized construct. Black Wolf is is saying that we're making Heatran. It doesn't have to be humanoid. Sounds like a mining bot inside a volcano. A mm -hmm. uh, fifth of a third, are you still here? If you are, I'd love for you to roll a die for me, please. If not, I can call on someone else. I don't know if... Uh Volvo, are you out there lurking? All right, maybe not. That is fine. Um, Raven, will you please roll a D6? Exclamation point 1D6. Which wine is your world building wine, Cybernetic? Stops on a three. Its high stat is going to be con. And now we have to determine what its low stat is going to be. So, Cybernetic, will you please also give me a D6 roll? Exclamation point 1D6. 
Stops on a two. Its low stat is dex. Now, lastly, what is the challenge rating that we want to aim to create this monster? And there are uh, there are 24 if we're going from uh, 0 to 20. Now, I know CRs can go up to 30. I'm keeping this... Uh, I'm not keeping this in the realms of, like, super de duper -dy, uh like, Tarask stuff. At least not, not yet. Um, so, we have... Uh, we're gonna need two dice rolls here. Hark, will you please give me a D4? And, uh, we're gonna see if we're gonna take the first 12, or if we're gonna go high and take the last 12. Alright. So, we're going low. Going low. And, oh, sheeps, will you please roll a D12? So here's the golems and stuff. Um, we have an 11. Oh, all right. So this is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. We are going to be making a CR7. We want a CR7 construct with maybe a bit of an elemental twist, whether it comes to, you know, attacks or defenses or, you know, how we describe it exists. It lives in an area that uh, has both caverns, caves, and crevices. I guess that's three, not both. And, uh, and also is mountainous in some way. It's medium-sized. And high con low dex. It's sort of like the really strong 80s wine, Issa Sledgehammer flavor wise. So I, unfortunately, I am not a, uh, I am not an expert. Uh, so your description, while appreciated, are pearls before swine, uh, cybernetic illithid. The last sentence I understand when it comes to uh, tart, fruity, tannin, uh, dry, mouthfeel. Um, I love the word mouthfeel. Um, I, I get that, but uh, when you're comparing it to other wines, I I don't mind wine. I have wine. I also have a bottle of mead in the house, too. Uh, but I, I don't drink it enough to be able to compare uh, names or labels. I'm going to drink hydrogen water when I come back from break, Hypnotic. I have, uh, I have um, a fresh box of bags of it in my fridge. Could be a slow tank. Might be a slow tank. Uh, welcome, Razd. A robot used in mining to save humanoid lives with a bit of, element of fire elemental to help it in mining. High con, but not very maneuverable. Sounds good to me. Oh, you bought uh, you bought a hydrogen water, Nina? What did you think? Or have you not had it yet? I did not make the mead myself, Black Wolf. Oh, sheeps. I, look, if I, if I will turn you into a wine drinker, then I assure you, you can buy... Um, there are some options. Uh, there, if you want to feel, uh, if you want to feel fancy, but not be out of pocket too much, you can always have Arbor Mist. If you would like, uh, if you are an animal lover, um, and someone who really just, you know, enjoys nature, um, then there's always, um, Mad Dog, uh, 20, Mad Dog 4040 Fine Wine. 
And if you don't want Arbor Mist or Mad Dog, uh, you can always buy uh, your wine in a box. Which comes in two flavors, red and white. <laughs> this is the entertain y'all i got you in here for D, D, but now we're talking about being high class wine aficionados <laughs> oh gosh uh you could always just get portuguese and get uh nine us uh dollar per liter for a pretty high quality wine <laughs> I prefer white wines myself, but that's because I like cold drinks. <laughs> All right. This is the prompt now that I would like to to explore. It sounds like y'all want something that works. Um, it, it sounds like something that y'all want that works in or around a volcano. Which is perfectly fine. It's still in the mountain and, and certainly elements of Underdark or, or Cavern. Not offhand, but um, uh, the Great Lakes are a good wine growing area. There's a lot around here, Black Wolf, uh, because the lakes help keep things warmer longer. Uh, for a, and it and it also, um, well, it keeps things warmer longer. It can help if we're if you're west of Cleveland, uh, because we also don't have the lake effect snow uh, since it builds up until about my city, and then and then from about here on. Uh, is just the lake effect snow dumps. A mining rig would actually be pretty interesting. A vehicle, give it a small crew. All right, so we have... Um, apparently this is... We're bold now. Excuse you, I controlled entered here. Uh, volcano, mining rig, <laughs> wow, oh sheeps, well that, I can see where that really, uh, that really tickled you then. Um, all right, so here's, here's something else then. Um, let's determine, let's determine who made this rig. Uh, Shukan, will you please roll a d10? Eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is, uh, made by half-orcs. I'm I'm trying to keep things simple, Shukan, but yeah, if we wanted to unlock all races, we could. But keeping it to the core books uh, makes things a little bit easier for the workshop and for... If anyone out there is new uh, and they don't have all the splat books, I don't want them to feel obligated that they have to go out and get this in order to be, you know, good at making monsters. Totem Fiend, uh, good to see you back. Welcome. All right, so a big slab of metal for shielding. Yeah, high health, really low dex. Um, I 
volcano mining rig made by half orcs. Uh, I, th I think the concept is uh, so it have a uh, high AC and even high hit points as well. Yeah, Razd. Yeah. What about um, what about uh, resistances? I'm not talking immunities. I'm talking resistances. Half damage. What uh, again? This is all conceptual. I don't want you being like, well, but if we give it three or more, we have to. Edge no, don't worry about that. This is pure concept. Is this thing? Uh, is this thing resistant to? Um, you know, slashing, piercing, bludgeoning from non-magical weapons. Uh, razzed, uh, jinx, I guess. Um, is this a, uh, is it, uh, res is it resistant to fire? Or are we making it immune to fire because it works in a volcano? Yes, uh, oh, you know what? You bring up a good point, Cybernetic. And hey, uh, the Crimson Pez, welcome. Um, I do want to bring up here... Uh, so we have Clay Golem. At the beginning of the Monster Manual, it you do get a breakdown. Oop. There we go. Well, this is where they dwell. Types. Uh, constructs are made, not born. Some are programmed by their creators to follow a simple set of instructions while others are imbued with sentience and capable of independent thought. Golems are the iconic constructs. Many creatures native to the outer plane of Mechanus, such as Modrons, are constructs shaped from the raw uh, material of the plane by the will of more powerful creatures. Uh, normally, well, maybe not normally, especially if we're making abnormal monsters, uh, there are usually a certain set of riders that go with a particular type of monster. And so, for example, constructs uh, usually don't need to eat, breathe, sleep. They are immune to poison. Those gargoyles. Let me go back to... Oh, those are gigantes. Uh, the gith. There we go. Uh, let's see. Damage immu immunities. Well, for the clay golem, it's acid, poison, psychic, and bludgeoning. The flesh golem, lightning, poison, bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing from non-magical weapons that aren't adamantine. That is something else to consider, too. Um, adamantine weapons auto-crit objects. And, uh, uh, objects, or in this case, creatures that have object properties. Uh, and this would be something to consider is, uh, would this also succumb to adamantine weapons? And so this is, uh, now these are, uh, immunities, not even resistances. So really, if not resistances, I think we might just escalate to immunities. Uh, slashing, piercing, bludgeoning from non-magic fire because it, it exists in a volcano something like it repairs with fire Uh, something else a lot of constructs have also is immutable form. The uh, flesh golem is immune to any spell or effect that would alter its form. Uh, acid absorption on clay golems. Lightning absorption on flesh golems. Fire absorption on iron. And on stone, uh, the uh, the golem is immune to any spell or effect that would alter... Or I'm sorry. Uh, this one actually doesn't have an absorption for the stone golem. Which is fine. We don't, ne we don't necessarily need a, um, an absorption. Uh, 
Well, uh, this is if it's if it is not immune to psychic damage, or if it is immune to psychic damage, then it is most likely just a a vehicle. It requires a pilot because it has a mind, and the mind or the mind-like magics can be altered or damaged by psychic magic. If it is autonomous, if it is autonomous. I would say psychic damage would, um, well, I don't know. I don't know. I'm seeing and double checking Gorgons are all, oh no, Gorgon is a monstrosity, uh, not a construct. Uh, poison psychic, fire poison psychic. This one isn't immune to psychic, but that's because it actually has a brain. And this one is immune to psychic, probably because then they are, um, the trade-off is they're given a command that they can act on, but it's very simple. I don't know about necrotic rezzed. Necrotic isn't just a decay of flesh. Uh, necrotic could also be the oxidization of metal or an erosion of stone or things like that. We'll say psychic as well, uh, since they are they're mining bots. Fire absorption to repair. Well, silver does oxidize, English Mudkip. Gold, and technically gold can, but we're talking uh, mercury. Silver does oxidize. Uh, normally gold does, does not, unless you're exposing it to mercury. So really what we want, <laughs> really what we want is uh, titanium. And uh, here's an interesting fact. Uh, while we know titanium to be, in many cases, metallic, uh, do you know how titanium is actually mined? Like, if you were to dig in the ground and you found titanium, what does it look like? Do any of you know? Titanium is usually found as crystal. I mean, powder, perhaps, as a, you know. Uh, however, it doesn't, we don't get the metal that we know as titanium until it's actually melted down. It's got a high con and high AC. Why not tungsten? Why not tungsten? This could be a, a this could be a, a tungsten miner bot. All right, so we have we have some basic ideas. Don't worry, don't worry about uh, what we can add or subtract. Um, I'm fine continuing to develop this uh, for the sake of getting the to, to to get to the beginnings of the CR calculation. You know, we have an expected challenge rating. It's basic statistics. Um, you know, if we were to go through and actually stat it out. Yeah, why not Dolomite? It would absolutely just knock all the ladies out.
Oh yeah, like Osmium, uh, Obadium, uh, Unobtainium. Uh, we can make up all sorts of stuff. You know, I'll tell you, everyone. I'll tell you, in a different world, where uh, our cultures discovered how to harvest aluminum out of the soil earlier than we did, we would be valuing aluminum like we did gold. Because gold was chosen because of its uh, portability, its malleability, and the fact that it doesn't tarnish without, you know, super duper, uh, super duper means. Yeah, Black Wolf, we are we gave it fire not only fire immunity, but fire absorption. So it's 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 fine. No, I understand Raven. It's a tungsten I I I guess that could be taken both ways. It's a tungsten mining bot. Not a tungsten mining bot. What is English? I know, right? Now, what I'd like to do then with you all, maybe there's a couple special abilities we can give this thing. Pardon. You know, what would a, what abilities would a mining bot have? And if any of you have your Dungeon Master's Guides handy, you can open them to page 280 or 281. And we can determine, you know, do you think that um uh do you think that uh as a part of the way that it mines whatever it mines uh would it have a charge attack if we do that would increase its dpr and it could increase its offensive cr and thereby increasing its overall cr if you think that this thing was built to charge and kind of you know ram in Does it fly? Um, does it give off? Um, does it give off a stink? Does it have magic resistance? Ooh. Does this thing just, you know, exist? Is this super tanky? So it actually has a uh, resistance to magic. No flight too heavy. Yeah, alloys are several are uh, two or more metals melted together, Black Wolf. Not intended for combat. All right. No, hypnotic gamer. Do what you got to do. Can you get the ability to scuttle like a Zoidberg? If you wanted to, the movement generally movement doesn't um, doesn't uh, do too much, if anything, to challenge rating. Yo, Sheeps is looking to copy off someone else's DMG. Yeah, we'll we'll talk about attacks. Um, right here, so we'll put. Uh, I don't know if it would have a. Uh, I don't know if it'd have a fire attack per se. But I could see exhaust as being um, poison or acid. And if it's a mining bot. It probably has some kind of an acidic blast to help soften up or weaken the rock around the metal so that the metal is easier to extrude from the rock, which is turning into slag around it. Well, it's not necessary. It doesn't have to be part elemental, but what we do want to do, Shukan, is, uh, is take some kind of a, some kind of a prompt you know, what makes an elemental an elemental here? You know, it can usually interact in some way with the thing that it is made from. 
Of course, a bunch of damage resistances. They're magical creatures. Um... A bunch of uh, conditioned immunities as well. But you can see here that the elementals all have some kind of a... Um, some kind of a, a special thing that happens, right? Uh, and they can even have a weakness. And so that could be a part of this too. Uh, this is water susceptibility. Um, and if, if you say, well, you know, water susceptibility, probably not for this. Then what if we're looking at the mountain in Underdark and it has a uh, vulnerability to thunder damage? You know, it can crack really easily when like vibrated apart. thinking it would be a sort a sort of since you said they're made out of a mishmash of corpses a flesh no 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 I, I didn't say this monster was made of corpses a flesh golem is made of corpses yeah or if you want to say that it actually so that it has a a thunder attack like a, it, it's a it'd be like a jackhammer or something da 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 A force weakness? No, don't be quiet. You're fine, Black Wolf. If I wanted to be quiet, I'd tell you to be quiet, and I haven't done that. Oh, oh, uh, yeah. Uh, do you have a tail from the, your tabletop balloons? Also, welcome. All right, do you want it to have a thunderous jackhammer attack or do you want it to have an acid spray? Something more along those lines. And remember, we don't have to give it a weakness to anything. Um, in fact, uh, in 5th Ed, there's, uh, you know, you, you'll even find a lot of undead and demons don't intrinsically have uh, radiant damage as a vulnerability. A, a lot of the concepts such as, well, undead are negative energy, and so any positive energy has to hurt them. A lot of that stuff is gone in 5th edition. Alright, so in this case, if it's meant to jackhammer into walls of rock... Then it would have some kind of a uh, thunder attack, like a percussive attack. Oh yeah, Black Wolf. We could uh, we could put whatever whatever topical explanation on top of the mechanics that we want to. Absolutely. Well, it would function just like, um, I, I mean, in D&D, &D, you can turn and face as you attack, unless there's extra extenuating circumstances. Thunder attack slash jackhammer. Now, what we could do for the exhaust, like what Cybernetic Lithid was talking about, is give it the stench ability of a troglodyte, and that would increase the monster's effective AC by one. So maybe whatever fuels it 
you know, some like uh, it runs on uh, like a brimstone core. If we want to make this somehow partially elemental, um, it, it it processes the fuel and it's just co constantly farting out fumes. And so whoever operates it, you know, might be, uh, you know, might be used to it or is wearing special gear. But if you were to fight one of these things, it would have the stench ability and that would make its effective AC a little bit higher than even what it already is. We could give it also something like the Tunneler ability, like what an, uh, an Umber Hulk has, though that is not going to affect the, um, that is not going to affect the, uh, the CR. But I mean, still, if, if we're building a monster stat block, uh, Tunneler. Not incorporeal, not really false appearance, or fey ancestry. I think this is good. Infernizard, welcome back. Well, hey, we're making monsters, and so I, I hope that you'll enjoy it, Infernizard. Blue says, we investigated a bathhouse. I flirted with some people, got two dates, learned my character has no shame and doesn't care for towels. Walking around with only my coin purse around my neck. Uh, I also found a secret passage, fought some baddies, turned into a brown bear, killed baddies, tried to rescue the kidnapped victim, uh, but his hood was magic and made a suit of armor gauntlets attack whoever touched it. Lots of laughs and jokes and brutal combat. I'm glad you had a lot of fun, Baloo's Clues. And one of the players won an art commission on a Twitter raffle and said he's going to commission my character in the bathhouse wearing a Borat bikini getting swooned over. <laughs> very nice. Very nice. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Now with this... Um, we can begin to break down the CR of the monster. And for any of you who want to play along at home, this is a worksheet for calculating that. And I, unfortunately, the last part of it ends up, uh, the last part of it ends up not translating into the link. So if we come down here, our expected CR we want to make is seven. You know, that's our goal. That's what we're hoping for. And and so this is, you know, we're hoping that at the end of averaging everything, here we go. And, and as we're going through the process and we say, all right, you know what? This thing has got to have, um, you know, we're saying this thing has got to have 200 hit points. Absolutely. Armor class, it has to be 18. At you know, at least 18 to hit. Uh, we already have its size as medium. Damage per round. Now, this this does not matter whether this is the thunder attack, uh percussive, like a, a, a jackhammer attack. This could be a simple, uh, it pokes you with something sharp for a piercing attack. It doesn't matter if it's magical, if it's fire, if it's poison or whatever. This is just DPR. It's just DPR. And we say something like, eh, yeah, you know, This thing should probably be outputting 30 DPR. Now, its attack bonus... Mm, you know, it's a mining bot. It probably doesn't have to be too high. Because it's only meant to just go up to an unmoving target 
and go butta 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 against it. And so maybe we keep the attack bonus at three. And you can say, whoa, hold up. Hold your horses, Matty Morgs. Uh, excuse me. But a proficiency bonus of three means that this is as low as a CR5, and we're making a seven. Aha! Au contraire, mon frère. This is true. This one stat, heck, we could even give it a plus two. If we wanted. If something in the calculation is lower and something is higher, it's going to average to about where we want it to be. And yeah, Cybernetic, we can do things like uh, lessen its move speed, but even if it teleported, let alone trundled along a mountain path, the movement, for the most part, does not matter. So I, I would have no problems with giving it a 20 speed, something like that. Uh, but for the purposes of calculating challenge rating, uh, its speed does not matter. Shukan, yes. Um, in fact, that's something that Bright on Tuesday has done before. Ooh, you know what? I We missed this. Heated body? Heated body, as you get from an Azer, this would be fun to give as well. And you know what? Let's go to the buffet, all right? So we're, we're going to save five points of, of uh, heat damage from there. Uh, we also are... Uh, we are also... What else did... What did we give it? Stench. We gave it stench. And it is also going to have resistances and immunities. It's actually going to have immunities. But no, vulner but no vulnerabilities. It, uh, it cannot fly and deal damage at range, so we don't need to worry about that. And it has no special save proficiencies versus spell effects. So now by inputting all of our, all of our hopes and dreams, we're like, yes, 18 AC, num, 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 num. 200 hit points. Ooh, yeah. It's, yeah, it's a little, it's a little weak on hitting, um, but we want to make sure that it can output in some capacity 30 damage per round. And after all of this, we scroll back up. doop a 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 doop Oh. All right. Well. Yeah, now it's a CR-12. And now we play the game. Now we play the game of what do we, what do we diminish? Remember, it's DPR. Yes, it's yeah, cybernetic. Y you're picking up what I'm putting out there, and because if we look here, the damage per round, we say, whoa, 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 hold on. We want it to be able to deal 30 damage per round. Why is this crazy thing saying 35? Oh, heated body. So let's drop Heated Body. All right. Well, we're still a CR-12, but wait. No. Oh. I liked Heated Body. You can go back and keep it if you want. And you say, well, you know, Stench from the Exhaust is an, uh, is an effective AC increase of 1%. Uh, because uh, any creature other than the monster within five feet must make a saving throw or be, or be poisoned. We say, well, maybe we don't want people to be poisoned. Or maybe you do because it just is belching out a very foul gas. 
And in this case, if the effective AC goes up by one, but we still only want it to have an 18, you come up here and you say, uh, all right, so we're gonna give it an armor class of 17, but the effective AC is gonna be 18. Uh-oh. We're still at 12. What the heck is keeping us at 12 from seven? I would like to point out this creature's effective hit points is 400. Now hold up, Matty Morgs. What in, what in tarnation, what long-eared galoot gave us 400 hit points when we clearly stated 200? And where does that come from? Where does it go? I will direct you to Cotton Eye Joe. And Cotton Eye Joe is the fact that we have three or more resistances and, uh, and or immunities. Because we have all of that stacked up, we effectively have more hit, uh, more hit points. And if you take a look in the calculation, 400 hit points right here is a CR20 vanilla monster. A CR20 vanilla monster. And if, if you want to make a cut, if you want to make a cut, this might be the place to do it. And you say, but my hit points, oh, oh, I want this thing to be beefy. It still will be. It might only list here. Let, watch what happens. We're going to give this thing a hundred hit points. Hello. Hello. What did that just do? We effectively have 200 hit points, which is what we wanted because of the immunities. But when we take a look now, did you see our challenge rating went to from 12 to 7? And with uh, we're still maintaining our 18. We're still keeping stench. We did lose our fiery body, although, if you want to be tricky about it. Hey, Shukan. Shuk Shukan wants to... Boom. You know, throw that back in the pond and uh, and see what happens here. Y you see how this is a process of back and forth? Hey, Shukan. Look at that. And you know why? You, well, you know why? Because a 30 DPR is only a CR4 output. 35 is only a 5. So increasing it by 5 doesn't even bring us back up to our 7. Well, when you when you say walk up the the health, you just mean to increase the hit points until it goes up a challenge rating class. Now, one thing I do need to double check is if absorption would be like a regeneration effect. Uh, breath weapon, brute, chameleon, change shape. Because absorption isn't a list up here. Uh, oh, damage absorption. As, as per a flesh golem, no. Damage absorption does not affect the CR. And by the way, you'll notice all these ones that have dashes aren't on this website. Because add them all you want. Make a, make a monster that has everything, everything that doesn't have a, uh, a CR uh, effect. Uh, and it's suddenly the... Um, what is Puffin's Forest uh, character's name that has one level and everything? absurd make a make an absurd monster that has everything that doesn't affect cr and have fun with it all right so it can absorb fire all day long and it, it'll be fine welcome back hypnotic yeah I, absurd I, I think that's what i said if i messed it up then shame on me 
And yes, yeah, Cybernetic says, so yeah, basically, and that's fine. So we can come down here and we can say, all right, well, you know, ah, should it deal more damage? You know, could we walk that up? Sure. We won't get as many hit points, but we could walk up our DPR if we want. You can also say, you know what, though? This thing was built by half-orcs to, uh, to harvest metals in a volcano. It's really just meant to mostly stand still and a pound rock over time. So it might not even need... It might not even need a... Um, uh, it might not even need a, uh, a damage adjustment because we're willing to accept it's low damage, but it's going to stick around forever. And so if we really just wanted to have more hit points, then we could do what, uh, we could do what, uh, Cybernetic said. And, uh, and we say, all right, so a hundred brings us uh, to CR seven. What about 150? Whew. All right. See now, remember though. It's because everything is doubled. Um, so, 110. All right. 120. Uh-oh. 115. 113. 112. 111. 110 hit points it is. So that's our magic number, Cybernetic. <laughs> if nothing else changes, if nothing else changes, this is what we have. And then on the final, uh, on the final note, I mean, beyond just going through and giving it a stat bar then that retroactively would make sense for, uh, for all of this. When you are calculating the DPR, this does not matter if it's one attack per round, three attacks per round, etc. What this is checking for is the average damage dealt over the course of three rounds of combat. And if it's an AOE attack... Such as, uh, I think someone earlier said a, a flamethrower. If you're calculating that, and now we're getting a bit into math, but it's nothing too onerous. Um, if we're, uh, then an AOE is considered to hit two of the four party members that are attacking this monster. CR is based on four party members of that level taking on a monster of that challenge rating, and it's a fair fight. The The PCs are probably going to win, but it'll still bloody their noses a little bit if you only have one of them. Yeah, Totem, uh, oh, sheeps would need to uh, hand out EXP to you. And now you can say, uh, all right, so if this is uh, our attacks, attacks, if uh, this is, uh, we'll just call it Jackhammer, and you get one, you know, it's uh, one attack at a plus three, well, th that's, uh, yeah, the attack bonus, um, then uh, that would deal, if it gets one attack per round, the average of, uh, so let's see, that would be a strength modifier. Of course, this is also where your stat bar comes in. Yeah, my chair's not been doing so hot lately. But I'm still on camera, so that's good. Anyway, I'm going to slowly sit up again. Uh, let's see, an uh, average of a D10, 
Uh, an average of a D10 would be uh, five and a half. So this would be something like, uh, I mean, if you want to round it up, then say six. So this would be like five D10 plus whatever the modifier is. So it only gets to attack once and, the, and to hit is low, but this will just wall up a skull with its one attack. Or you can say uh, multi-attack. Uh, multi-attack uh, legs or something. Uh, so three hits. They still have the plus three each. Uh, though in this case, in order to get that average of ten, uh, we need seven, which is a D12. So it would be one D12 plus, uh, plus the strength or whatever uh, modif uh, modifier. So it's either one jumbo attack for a huge amount of singular damage or th two, three, five, whatever you want it to be, multi-attacks. As long as the DPR is upkept and we can all, and then we come down here and we can do a uh, Flammenwerfer. Because look, sometimes you gotta worf some Flammen. And if this is the case, remember that. I, so it would it would use this attack. Yeah, it'd, it'd be like the the big O, just the piston coming down through the the forearm. And so the DPR on this is we're presuming this hits. We're presuming this hits two party members. And so two party members would need to be dealt 15 damage each. And if you're to do something like that, uh, that could be done. Let's see, a D8 is uh, on average an, uh, four and a half. Uh, so then the, the Flamen Werfer would be something like uh, four D8. And then if there's a plus or something on top of that. But do you, do you see then? So you set a goal for what you want your DPR to be on average with your monster. And then you can retroactively go back and work the numbers and the stat block to ensure that that's the case. Yeah, and Shukan, we can add a claw. Um, a claw won't affect the CR, so we could, you know, we could throw on, um, you know, a grappler. Um, so you could give it the grappler ability as per a mimic to be even better at grappling. And we don't have to change the CR. Hey, Big Sam, welcome. So, hey, ta-da! I'm going to get up. I need to stretch my back a little bit. And uh, we're going to do this one more time. And I, in, in this time, and I, so I, th I think we're going to have it go more quickly. And then uh, when we, uh, the next step after that, uh, we are going to describe how adding character levels to a monster may or may not change its challenge rating. You know? Do you want to have a kobold that is a level 10 monk? I can assure you it's not a CR 1 8th creature anymore. Yep, hey, alright, everyone, so uh, stretch, get a drink, uh, powder your nose, do what you have to do, and we'll be back in just a little bit here to make another monster. This was a wonderful exercise with you all, and I look forward to the next one. <laughs>